Hi, I'm Steve Frith, and today I want to go over one of the fundamentals of elk hunting gear, a layering system. Whether you're climbing up thousands of feet of elevation gain, or just glassing for hours, you need to be able to make yourself the most comfortable as possible so you can hunt harder, longer, and therefore increase your chances of success. I want to explain what layers I bring, um, what the purpose of each layer is, what the purpose is not. Lastly, I want to say don't get caught up in having a matching system. Just focus on having the layering system in place. Having the best of the best is not going to make you a better elk hunter. They have their advantages, but you simply need a layering system and you can improve it over the years as you figure out what works best for you. Let's get started. <music> off of course we have the base layer. The base layer is the foundation of your whole system. For elk hunting you might be hunting up in the 80s or down in the teens. Obviously a lot of that depends on your location and the time of year but regardless if it's 85 or 15 I'm still wearing the same briefs and the same t-shirt. The purpose of a base layer is to help you regulate your body temperature. You know you have ebbs and flows whether you're hiking up a steep mountain to just glassing in the wind you're going to start cooling down and the purpose of the base layer is to help take out those highs and lows. Uh, it does that through having some breathability so when you're hiking uh, you know you're able to let out some of the heat but it also holds in a little heat. It's close to your skin it makes you feel warm and then lastly it wicks away the moisture as you start to sweat naturally to cool your body down it's going to pull that away so you don't cool down as fast. This is a merino wool shirt they're synthetic, there's benefits of both. I don't want to get into that. I would recommend trying both and figure out what works best for you. Next we have a mid layer. And a mid layer can vary, but for me, a mid layer is just an extension of a base layer with an additional warmth. You're looking for the same properties as a base layer, but it for a little colder temperature. So the base layer that I have on is lightweight. I want to be able to dry it out. If it's 75 degrees and I'm sweating, I want to be able to throw it in the sun and have it dry quickly. Well, let's drop that down to 50 degrees. I'm still walking around. It's not raining. I'm going to throw on this mid layer that is just a little thicker weight and it's going to breathe still but not as much. going to hold in some warmth. I also have you know mid layer long johns that are also merino wool. I like wearing the long long johns in the morning uh, especially with the zip off. So again the mid layer for me is an extension of my base layer adding warmth. You can also get things such as fleece and that works even better for warmth it just may not have the breathability. So you have to figure out am I going for warmth and I'm not moving as much you might have a thicker heavier weight mid layer to add more warmth but less breathability. Next let's move on to the insulation layer. For the insulation layer Obviously it is for insulation. Now I've talked about how mid layers and base layers add warmth and that's an insulating property but their main goal is not insulation. Insulating layers such as a down or synthetic uh, puffy you might call it. This is strictly for insulation. Holding in body heat. Not breathing. So if I started exercising in this I'm going to heat up really quickly start sweating and that's going to cause issues of moisture. Uh, situations where you're glassing, not moving. This is strictly for retaining body heat. So if you're moving around a lot I would not recommend. This is not an outer layer. If wind is heavy this is going to allow wind to, to penetrate through. Another thing I want to mention is there's a lot of puffy jackets and it's how much you want to spend. You can get away. This is you know over $200, almost $300 and this has probably the same effectiveness although it is bulkier and it is heavier. So it's just what you can afford in your budget. You might hurt your back a little bit more by having heavier uh, more weight but uh, don't feel like you have to go out and buy the fanciest jacket. Uh, I do prefer having a hood on everything but my base layer. You lose a lot of heat out of your head and your neck areas so I would uh, recommend just having hoods on everything to kind of seal up uh, around your neck so you're not losing uh, precious heat. I also have down pants. I don't wear these as much as I do a puffy jacket. I keep this puffy readily available. All of a sudden I'm glassing I can pull it out throw it on. 
I, if I am warm, but I'm not too warm, if I'm warm, I'm throwing this puffy jacket on even before I start cooling down so I can retain that body heat. Uh, you kind of want to be ahead of that. Uh, puffy pants are great for glassing. Again, you can wear both of these in your sleeping bag if you're is underrated and you want to uh, sleep in a little colder temperature. And then lastly, uh, I always bring puffy pants and puffy jacket because if I get away from, if I set up a bivy tent and I get out and uh, I get stuck somewhere, I can always throw on all these layers and including these, these are the crucial part and I can you know, survive overnight somewhere, potentially save myself from getting hypothermia. So very important insulating layers. I don't go anywhere without these two. An outer layer protects you from the elements. You can have two different systems. You can have a rain jacket and then your normal jacket, or you could combine and have a jacket that is waterproof, windproof, and that may be a little bit bulkier. So uh, I did a lot of hunting in Alaska last fall, and I went with using a high quality rain jacket as my full time outer. Um, if you're hunting in somewhere where it doesn't rain often, you might have a very packable rain gear set that you can just throw in just in case, but you don't really need it, just a soft shell that's very windproof. I cannot emphasize enough how important it is not to get soaked uh, when you're out in the backcountry. That can ruin a hunt very quickly. I find it very nice that you can have zippers on your legs and your arms to really let out heat, because if it's raining but it's still warm, uh, you want to let out that hot air. The main purpose of the outer layer, though, is to protect you from the elements. Wind, rain, can't go without them. I had a friend on our sheep hunt that used military surplus rain gear and it worked great, he got a sheep. So you don't need the top end gear, you just need uh, gear that works. So find what works for you. Lastly, I wanna talk about the pants. These are just your standard hiking pants. These are the attack pants. They work very well as a all season. Uh, you can layer them up, they have zips. There's a lot of different hunting pants you can use. Sure, it's nice to have matching camo, but don't get caught up in that. Find something that works for you. It's got a little bit of durability, especially if you're gonna get in some brush. Uh, but yeah, these are the attack pants. A rule of thumb that I like is, if I'm starting out in the morning, I wanna start out a little cold. And it sounds weird, but if you're standing there and you're like, all right, let's go hiking, and you're already kinda of warm, take a layer off and get cold before you start, if that makes sense, because you're gonna heat up pretty quickly. Thanks for watching, I hope this helped. If you've got any questions, put it in the comments below and check out our other videos.